Alright, um, now what I'd like to do is to show you how to do uh, an amortization table. Okay, so um, an amortization table uh, to, you know, define what amortize means. It means to repay the mortgage over a given period of time to equal payments at regular intervals. Um, the period of time is known as the amortization period. So the term of the mortgage is just the length of time it takes to repay repay the loan so the, or the amount of time that the agreement is in effect. So let's say that we are uh, borrowing for a car. So the cost of the car I'm just going to make an arbitrary figure. I'm not going to be too too elaborate, but a nice one runs in the area of twenty-one thousand dollars. Maybe maybe your tastes are more expensive than that. Maybe they're cheaper than that, but we'll go with twenty-one thousand. And maybe you have money on hand. Maybe you have some money to sort of pay in advance, so you can put some money up front called a down payment and the down payment can be anything up to 21,000 of course you can pay the whole pay for the whole value of the vehicle in uh, cash well cash or at least check or whatever in a sing in other words in a single payment but let's say you're like most people and you have a mortgage to pay off and you have other bills and that means that you have to also pay for your car in installments so you did save up some money. You didn't. Uh, you didn't save up no money at all. So let's say that you saved up, say, five thousand dollars. Okay. Uh, if you like, maybe you're not so frugal. Maybe three thousand. Okay. So I'll say three thousand dollars. And most of these car loans are over a five to seven year period. We'll say five years. Now, of course, the number of months in, a, in, in those five years would be the number of years multiplied by 12. So it's 60 months, as you can see. Now, how much are you loaned? How much are you asking the bank for? Well, you're not asking the bank for the entire cost of the car because, remember, you put forth a down payment. That should, be, that should offset the amount of money you're lent so that you, you don't have to pay as much back in interest. So uh, the loan then is really just the cost of the car subtract your down payment, right? So that becomes 21,000 minus 3,000, which is $18,000. Now for the interest per year, I'm, I haven't really looked this up, but I know that nowadays interest is pretty low, money is pretty cheap, people are so eager to borrow these days. So I believe it might be about 2.1%. So expressed as a decimal, that's 0 0.021 uh, interest per year. Now, uh, because you're paying per month, um, you know, the laws are a little different about this. It could be that the interest uh, is accrued per month and your payments are per month, meaning it's a simple annuity. And by the way, that's what we're going to assume in this assignment that uh, your borrowing is based on a simple annuity. Uh, otherwise, um, in apparently according to Canadian law, let's say you're making a mortgage on a home. I think that's a bit different, but let's say it is. I believe banks are only allowed to charge interest twice per year. So that's once every six months. But of course your payments are once every month. So that means your, your payments are different from your interest uh, accumulation. And uh, that does change by um, not too insignificant degree how much you're gonna how much you're gonna pay out. It's not a, it's not a huge difference, but it's enough of a difference that it might matter. And it ends up being um, the fact that you're charged interest twice a year is better for the consumer, right? It's better for the consumer. Remember that interest is going to the bank; it's not going to you. So okay. So when we work this out as interest per month, remember this is an ordinary simple annuity where you're just going to assume everything is an ordinary simple annuity. Zero point, well, 0 0.021 
really I can just take this cell here, click on it, oops, click on this, D2, and divide by number of months in a year, divide by 12. And I got 0 0.0175. 0 0.17 of what? Of 1% is charged per month. Not too bad. The regular payment, now this is where things get a little tricky because the regular payment is the one where you have a rather, um, rather arcane sort of formula. Uh, and I will write it for you here so you can see it as a, um, you can see it as a formula. So I'm just going to go into tools, or is it insert? Yeah, insert equation. So let's insert an equation. R is your regular payment. Now, remember, okay, for, for one thing, your, your amount, your uh, amount of print of, uh, sorry, the total amount paid out in a loan is equal to, um, as a fraction, uh, R, sorry, that's R, you know what, that's not a very big font. I'm going to um, make that bigger. How about 24 point? R multiplied by one plus I to the power of negative N minus one, a lot of negatives here, divided by I. Now, now try solving for R, because this is what we want to do. We want to solve for R. R, it, remember, is our regular payment. A is the total amount paid out, or the amount of the loan, actually. It's the amount, it's the amount of the loan. So R is the amount paid out. So if R is the amount paid out, then we can go here, just insert equation again, and R, this becomes this when we solve it. I'm not going to do the steps for you, but uh, you can see what's happening. Uh, AI, uh, hold on, make it a fraction and then AI divided by uh, all that stuff on the bottom. So I plus one, or one plus I maybe, doesn't matter. Remember I is your, um, I is your interest rate uh, calculated per month. So that's, or per, or in general, it's calculated per compounding period. And this is what we end up with. So um, this can equal um, A times I times 1 plus I to the power of negative N. Uh, sorry, minus 1 to the power of minus 1. A lot of negatives in this equation. So there you go. This is actually what we're after. Um, I don't know if I can make that bold face or not. Maybe not. At any rate, uh, can I change the color? Can I change it to red? No, I can't. It just wants to be what it wants to be. So this equation for my regular payment, this is going to be the regular amount of money, my regular payment, my payment that I'm going to make each month. That's what this formula is. Um, so I got to make this into a spreadsheet formula. Okay, so uh, let's do this by um, going to the spreadsheet. And so the um, so this is going to be the loan amount, right? The eighteen thousand dollars times um, the interest per month. That's this and then times, and then we, we make with a double bracket, one plus the regular interest per month, again, that's this, and to the power of, and I'm just going to go uh, in brackets, negative, um, negative the number of months, right? So that's this number, negative A4, um, minus one, and then close my bracket, and then put that to the exponent of negative one. So you can see this formula looks, well, it's <laughs> pretty, uh, pretty big. So, okay, so 
it looks to me like my regular payments for my car run about three hundred and sixteen dollars and twenty eight cents if that's unaffordable maybe you should go to a cheaper car or something so I'm going to um, change the view on this to 150 percent so I'll just make this bigger just so you can see the formula for what it is it's um, quite a quite a formula um, but notice that the letters are not really what matters it what matters are the amounts your your um, your cell references might be different from mine so but now how do we <coughs> I keep harping on the idea that this should be in dollars and cents, right? So minus, by the way, minus 316, minus 316, a negative number? Well, okay, uh, the reason it's a negative number is that money is what you are paying. So you are losing that money. That's why it's negative, okay? So we're just going to go to let's see format and then number and then select number again and like magic we have dollars and cents okay now 60 months now I also want to make a table so the month number the principal in other words this is the principal left over after you make each payment so that principle will keep going down and down and down and by the end it'll go to nothing it'll go to zero which is the whole point the interest which uh, will be interesting to you because it's always nice to know how much of what you're paying per month goes toward just paying off the interest let alone paying your car but you're paying the bank right so you're paying interest you're paying the bank for the privilege of them lending you your money, which, uh, by the way, comes out of thin air. Just don't say anything. Principal reduction. So the principal reduction. Principal reduction. Also in dollars. And basically, this is how much of that payment is going toward principal. Okay? And... You know what? I missed something. I missed something. Um, before I have that, I should also have the payment, the payment column itself. But even though each of these payments are going to be the same all the time, and this part is the remaining principal. Okay, and also in dollars. Okay, that's that. And uh, I'm just going to put this in a slightly different color just to make it stand out just a touch. Uh, I don't know, kind of greeny, a greeny color. Now, we need to label out the months from 1 to 60. You can type this. You can type the numbers from 1 to 60, but I'm lazy. So I'm just going to go to this little box thing, just like you do in Excel, and drag this all the way down so I get the number 60. I think it's 66 or something. Is it 66? Yeah. Oh, lucky, lucky guess. So there's my 60th month. So by that time, I should, my remaining principal should be zero dollars and zero cents at the end. So the principal right at the beginning is really the whole value of the loan, right? It's 18,000. The interest paid on it will be, well, it'll be the, um, let's see. It will be it will be the principal itself or the remaining principal multiplied by the interest per month. This number multiplied by interest per month, and so we have thirty one point five dollars in interest for our first payment. Our payment then is just this number, it's always this number. In fact, just to make sure it's locked on that number, I'll press the, the F4 key on my keypad, the, on the function keys, function four. You can also do it this way. You can do it this way if you want. Dollar sign D, dollar sign four. You don't have to use fancy key presses. And that's my payment. The payments are the same every single time. The principal reduction is going to be really the sum 
of the interest and the payment and the reason it's the sum and not the difference is because my payment is negative and the interest is positive so because they're opposite signs if I add the two together what's left is going to be the principal being paid so if I do this number plus this number then I get the amount applied to the principal right so of the 316.29 that I'm paying out $284.79 is being applied to the principal. So that should be reflected in this column. What's, in other words, the principal that's left over, which is a sum of this plus this. Remember, we have a negative number. We're adding a negative. So uh, means really the principal minus the principal reduction. But since it's already negative, we're just going to add it. So equals uh, B, B7 minus principal reduction E7 we get 18,284. Hold on, I subtracted. Dumb mistake, sorry. There we go, done. All right, so $17,715.21. Now if I highlight all this, I can do this for a few more rows. At least I hope I can. And, oh, maybe not. Did I do something wrong? Oh, yes. D3, D3 should be D, D3 should be a, uh, yes, okay. And what about this one? What's this? Oh, yes, D4, that's already got a dollar sign on it. D7 and C7, that's good too. And yeah, this new principal amount is going to be really this amount, right? It's going to be what was in the remaining principal. So in the next pay period, that now becomes the principal left over. And so it's the same as uh, what's in uh, cell F7. Once again, we apply all these, uh, all these formulas and we should get the same thing all over again. Uh, notice that the interest goes down ever so slightly. My payment is identical. The principal reduction becomes a little bit more and the remaining principal becomes a fair bit less. It's funny that the interest is I guess it's because I'm multiplying by 0.00175 that I'm getting these funny numbers. Uh, by the way, we will get funny numbers like this on occasion, in fact, probably quite frequently. Uh, so that means I got to reformat all these squares. In fact, that's what I'll do now before I forget. I'm just going to format, format all these squares. We go to format, number, and number, right? Now everything is in, now everything is in dollars and cents, which makes things a little more manageable. Now I believe from here I can copy this and go here. Yeah. So 17,429.93 gets copied over here. My interest on 17,429.93 is thirty dollars and fifty cents, so it's a little less than before. My payment is three hundred and sixteen twenty nine just like always. And notice my my principal reduction gradually increases. So my interest looks like it's gradually decreasing and my principal is gradually increasing. Notice that as time goes on, that interest will go down to almost nothing and the principal, and basically by the last few payments, it'll be almost all principal. And that's usually the way these loans work. So let's keep going. Let's go all the way down to 60 and let's see what we get. Finally at 60, I know I did this right because the very last value under principal reduction is zero dollars and zero cents. If you got that, that's a great indication that, you, you're, that you're on the right track, okay? Uh, very good indication, very encouraging. So uh, notice that um, at the very last, the principal is exactly equal to my payment. Um, within a few cents and notice okay 316.29 55 cents of that gets paid and 315.74 gets paid on the principal which was what was exactly what was remaining before and we're down to zero so that's really good if you if you did that right then good for you uh, some other things that are of interest pardon the pun are what are the total amount of money that you paid for that $21,000 car? It's kind of interesting to figure that out. 
Well, that actually is really just your regular payment multiplied by the number of months. You don't have to sum any column, although you could. You could take you could take the sum of column D, like this whole column, and you should be able to come up with the same amount. And mind you, notice that this cell is not formatted. You'd have to go here and format these things each time uh, to get things to. So notice that on a twenty-one thousand dollar, or on an eighteen thousand dollar loan, you're paying eighteen thousand nine hundred seventy-seven, close to nineteen thousand dollars. So the bank is getting an extra one thousand dollars from your purchase of a car. Here's another uh, way of calculating the same amount. How about if we do this? sum and then and then I have to select everything down here actually I don't have to I don't have to do that sum d7 down to what's 7 plus 60 67 so from d7 to d67 okay and we get the same thing well in other words what I did by multiplying the number of months times my regular payment should be the same as summing every number in this column. These should be the same number. And if they're not, you're doing something wrong, okay? Uh, that's the total amount of money paid for a car. What about the total interest paid? Well, now I have no, I have no choice. Because the interest keeps changing all the time, I have to now sum that column. I, I don't have, there's no fancy way to do this. So, um, so sum, and the, this is going to be, uh, under interest C7 to C I add 60 so I end up at 67 so nine hundred seventy seven dollars and twenty seven cents is the interest I paid which makes total sense because when you add this number to this number you do in fact get the positive version of that number so uh, it does kind of work out um, let's see so this sort of thinking, this sort of way of doing things by, say, using this formula, that's really the trickiest part of this whole spreadsheet, is just getting that formula right. And once you do, um, just make sure you've got the, the little formulas right too, and that everything has dollar sign whatever, because that saves you from having to retype everything all the time. Um, what what I did using my fancy just drag and drop uh, method of copy and paste um, assumes that uh, the cells will automatically update and these dollar signs prevent the update from happening because when I say D3 I really mean exactly D3 I don't mean any other cell so when I mean that when I mean that I fix a value on a certain cell on a spreadsheet and I mean nothing else then uh, I then I have to put dollar signs in front of the letter and in front of the number. So, but what about, how come I didn't put dollar signs here in front of B7? Well, B7, here's seven, that's my $18,000. Let's click on the cell below, it should have almost the same formula. See, it automatically updates to B8. I didn't type that in, I just dragged and dropped, right? I just dragged and dropped using the, um, using a little square that was here down in the bottom right hand corner. And notice that B8 is exactly the square I want. It's the remaining principal after the first payment, right? So, and then I then multiply that by my interest per month, and that's how I got $31, okay? Um, principal reduction uh, is just a subtraction, but because I'm adding a positive to a negative, it's really more, more of a sum. And the same is true for remaining principal. I'm adding a negative to a positive, so just add. You don't have to subtract, because if you subtract, your totals will go in the wrong direction. Uh, you'll end up with bigger totals, and you're supposed to get smaller totals you know, in a gradual manner. This exact same way of thinking will also apply to um, amortization of uh, of loans for uh, of mortgages for a home uh, and uh, it's the same it'll use the same spreadsheet and um, and the term of the mortgage well uh, it can be a lot longer it's not going to be five years unless you don't have a lot of money to pay right uh, it could be that through some some hook or crook 
you you manage to come up with most of the money to pay for a home and then you only have a small amount left and you know only a few years to pay the pay off uh, a loan that you had to borrow and so then it becomes a trivial a trivial thing to just have to think about